ภายในบ่อน้ําดิบเมื่อวานนี้ออกให้หมด This week two dead bodies were found in the water supply and sadly while they have to fish those bodies out they've turned off the water in a portion of Chomburi Apparently the village that we're now living in they're out of water and unfortunately water is not our only issue so I've taken Lily's daughter's push bike and we're heading to the water machine Uh, to fill up some water to do the washing up with, because there is a tank attached to this new house that we're renting, but but it's empty. So today we're surviving on bottled machine water. Ah, uh, okay, crop and cup. All right, this one's out of water. That's not my b e l i n e Man's laughing at me because obviously people have been here this morning. They've emptied their machine and let it go. So why has there been a rush on the water machines around town? Uh, because this week, uh, two dead bodies were found in the water supply. There's water station number two. Alas, alas, we're all shut up. Well, I guess it's back on the bike, looking for a third one. Lucky it's not the heat of the day yet. It's 10 a.m. Uh, but. By 1 p.m. Yeah, at the moment you do not want to be out in this sun. So I'm just going to keep riding till I find a functioning water station. Not seeing any. Uh -huh. Peak hour down here. Sorry, man. Looking for water. No water here, mummy. No help. So once I find a water machine, I'm going to fill up these 10 liters worth of bottles. That's for things like washing up and and probably showering in. But at the moment, nothing's coming out of the taps either. So we can't run the washing machine. Can't flush the toilets. This bad boy looks like it may be off. So a decarb. Do you have a this machine? No, I want to not have. Ah, gone. I'll keep going and looking for one. Thank you. Off we go. That one's non-functional. I get the feeling that it's not just us that are in a drought today and last night. It's, I think it could be the whole community, which is a worry considering Songkran's about to start. I mean, how are we going to fill up those water pistols? We're not setting any land speed records here, but we're making good progress with this little one-speed push bike. I really don't burn any calories riding the motor scooter, so this is something I should, I should do more of, shouldn't I? Oh, they've got water. Look, they're washing their car. Ah, washing car. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I think we're on. Uh, water, num pal. Yep, super helpful as usual. Okie dokies. Get our bottle. Pop it in there and hope and pray and wish. We'll do a test with one bart. One bart test. So you can press the pause button and you can stop it. Three down. I want to say that this notion that all Thai people are innately hospitable is that's up for debate. Friendly, yes. Very accepting of Westerners and our antics, yes. Patient, yes. But outwardly hospitable, sweet success. I know it's coming off as a little negative today, and we have hit some hurdles, uh, and that's fine. You know, life here is good. Uh, but one of the things that I had to get used to is uh, really fending for yourself, and it's not just a language barrier. I, I get a real sense from living in Pattaya, but also visiting Isan and. You know, traveling inland and regional Thailand a fair bit now. Thai people are really strong about their culture and their origins, and strong about the way that they do things, and especially the regional people. And on the whole, I'd say they don't seem that interested in learning any new techniques, any new strategies for doing things the way that they get done in the West. A lot of aspects of technology, yeah, have been adopted, but but I think a lot of that, in part, is. Purely for financial reasons, purely in order to make the place hospitable for tourists. Maybe it's just the relaxed way of life here. You know, um, it, it's very Buddhist. And here, regarding hospitality, here it's no big thing if the order at the restaurant gets stuffed up, or you ask for a coconut juice and you get strawberry, or you ask for a hot coffee and you get cold one with sugar, or you 
ask for no sugar and you get extra salt. And when I ask for these things, I'm asking for them in Thai, mind you. As Lily says, you're the visitor, Sam. You're not from this country. It's on you to do the changing. We don't need, we don't need to do the changing. No one asked for the GIs and the Australian infantry to roll in in 1965 and, and, and start a war next door and then set up camp here and never leave. We never asked for that. We don't need you. And, and there is a feeling here that also we don't want you here. Anyway, these are just musings. These are some of the things that come to my mind when I'm struggling with... Uh, when I'm struggling with uh, getting my basic needs met, like finding water. All right, so in my absence, Lily's ordered a water truck to fill up the water tank, the house water tank, uh, not for drinking, uh, but you can shower in this and you at least we can flush the toilets again. The likelihood that this hose will reach, slim to none. The neighbors jumped in on this. She wants hers filled up as well. I didn't film that reversing in saga, but that was bloody ridiculous. In and out three times, and then he realized he's too chubby to get out at the fence, so he had to go. One job. I had to come inside because I, I can't watch. The, the, the dilly dallying and the fluffing around, it just boils my blood. So now the hose is not long enough, apparently, to reach. And somehow, that's my problem. Now it's dirty. Yeah. Okay, so what's happened? Filling up the tank all at once, it's got all the sediment up and moving about. So you can see how much dirt was actually in the bottom of that tank. Is he still drunk? So he gave the neighbor her money back and said, oh, sorry, the hose is not long enough. Uh-huh. And now he said, oh, sorry. I've got a long hose in the truck. And, and then pulls it out. Now he wants his money back. So that is the sediment. From, I think it's just because we mixed up the tank, but that is why we don't drink the tap water, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now our entire street has gone out. The neighbours told us something that apparently happens quite regularly. One of many things that the landlord, of course, didn't tell us. Off to the bins. In Australia, I would have had the language to to combat to combat that. I'd be putting up much more of a fight than I can here, and it's simply because I don't have the language to go into battle. Now, Lily does. Um, sorry, guys. I'm filming from the bin room. Regarding Lily, you know, going into bat for our, our rights as tenants here in Pattaya, there's a bit of a Thai respect thing here going on. Thais look after Thais. Even if she's losing out, she's nowhere near as inclined as me to really kick and scream and jump up and down and say, hey, this is not acceptable. What are we gonna do about this, that, this? So the extra money we've had to throw down to compensate for the lack of stuff, the lack of cold water. So I'll mention a couple of things that we didn't realize when we signed the contract and moved in. The first thing off the top of my head, the water pipe. Uh, obviously too close to the surface or sitting out in the sun. So any water that's meant to come out of the taps at room temperature, is up over 35 degrees Celsius, you know, approaching 90 Fahrenheit. So what that means is if you want a traditional shower where it comes out of the tap, it's going to be hot all year round. He shoots, he scores.